Now, a top Iranian official says that the country will continue to stand by Syria as long as Damascus seems it necessary. The Secretary of Supreme National Security Council, Ali Shamkhani, said Iran's backing for Syria and its president, Bashar al-Assad, is in line with Tehran's strategy of safeguarding the resistance front and fighting terrorism. He said Assad is very popular with the Syrian people who believe the president has managed to withstand the current crisis despite political, economic, and security pressures. Shamkhani also touched upon a proposal already put forward by Iran to help end the Syria crisis. The four-point plan highlights an immediate ceasefire, reforms, national dialogue, and nationwide elections. Joining us now to discuss this further via Skype from the Iranian capital, Tehran, is Sayed Mustafa Khoshchesh. He's a journalist and political analyst. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Mr. Khoshchesh. Now, I'd like to touch on this point that was made by Ali Shamkhani regarding safeguarding of the resistance front. Ever since the onset of the Syria crisis, this is a term we've heard time and again uh, by Iranian officials as well as others. What does it mean? Hello, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, Iran is in there and is in Syria uh, on the basis of multiple defensive pacts and security pacts that it had signed with uh, Syria under President Bashar al-Assad's late father, Hafez al-Assad, as well as President Bashar al-Assad himself, of course, before the unrest started uh, in 2011. Uh, that's uh, one of the reasons Iran is in there. Um, the main reason is the spread of terrorism in the region that also brought Russia to Syria. And we all uh, know that both these reasons, uh, these reasons are still present in there. Um, uh, Iran's security pacts, uh, you know, uh, uh, require Iran to stay in there uh, as long as the Syrian government and nation demand and extend their re uh, request for help. Also, uh, the terrorist groups are not annihilated, though they have been uh, weakened very much, and uh, now they have the lower hand, but they are still in there. But the, the reason why uh, uh, Secretary Shamkhani has reiterated uh, uh, Iran's continued support for Syria this time is uh, uh, a response to the Turkish officials' uh, frequent remarks about uh, and demands about Iran's withdrawal from Syria. You know, Iran doesn't have any foot soldiers in there, but it has uh, advisors, and we all know that. And it has had an effective role in there in commanding and, and coordinating uh, different forces that are uh, helping uh, the Assad government and the Syrian nation. Now, uh, President Erdogan, that is the guarantor of the ceasefire, knows that he cannot uh, guarantee uh, or, uh, the compliance, full compliance of the militants under the ceasefire, uh, uh, their compliance with the paragraphs and their undertaking under the truce or the ceasefire agreement. That's why they are requiring, they are uh, trying to preempt Tehran and uh, start a playing game to say that Iran should leave Syria. That's one reason. Iran, you know, uh, Iraq, Syria, and uh, Hezbollah of Lebanon and Palestine, that's a stretch, uh, uh, that's a chain of resistance that have allied with each other in order to stand against terrorism and the Israeli regime. And uh, President Bashar al-Assad in Syria, uh, they, uh, uh, you know, play a, a vital role in this chain. And uh, the Israeli regime, as well as uh, the terrorists, the proxy forces of the United States and Saudi Arabia are doing uh, whatever they could in order to disrupt this chain and disconnect this chain. And this is no secret anymore after so many acknowledgments and, it, uh, and, and confessions made by uh, U.S. officials, the latest one being what, stated, what was stated by Secretary Kerry. Right. Before I let you go, Mr. Khoshchesh, of course, when we look at this four-point plan, that Iran has spoken about. This is something that Iran uh, gave forth uh, a lot earlier uh, and had insisted upon it being followed. However, we haven't seen that political will on the part of the international community, specifically the West and its allies. Right now, when the equations on the ground have changed, specifically since the liberation of eastern Aleppo, what do you make of this four-point plan? Can it be brought into implementation? 
Well, uh, there was a time when the so-called Friend of Syria talks started in Geneva. And uh, if you remember, they uh, didn't invite Iran and Saudi, the Saudis said if Iran had been invited, they would have left uh, uh, the talks. And uh, now, after a couple of years or more, uh, the situation has reversed totally. Now Iran and Russia are the centerpiece, are standing at the center stage uh, of uh, the political solutions. The Syrian crisis, after they helped uh, Bashar al-Assad, win back a major part of lost lands now after now that uh, the Syrian government is in control of all major cities across the country and uh, many militant groups have laid uh, down their arms or they are the rebel groups actually and they uh, have signed peace treaties with the government and given up fight against uh, the central government in Damascus you may now see only the terrorists in there, like Ahrar al-Sham, Jaysh al-Islam, and uh, uh, Jabhat al-Nusra, as well as Daesh or ISIL. They are the terrorist groups, but they have uh, sustained much damage. And as you see, the, their sponsors have changed the strategies. It's now uh, about five, six months that the Saudis, the Qataris, and uh, even Turkey, they are no more speaking of regime change plans in Syria because they know that it's just a dream and it's not possible anymore. The United States has been pushed to the margins, to the sideline, and it's not playing any more role. At the beginning of the talks in Geneva, it, uh, the United States was the uh, central actor, the main actor, along with its allies and proxy forces in the region, right. including Saudi Arabia. But now, Iran and Russia are standing at the center stage. Others are staying away, and even the United States and others, they, are, they have not been invited and included in these talks. And Turkey is shifting somehow its policies because it knows that if it wants to come back to the center stage, uh, and, and, and uh, if it wants not to be sidelined by uh, like the Saudis and the United States, it needs to modify its allegations and its uh, aspirations. And that's why they are no more talking about regime change in okay. Syria. So Iran and Russia are now playing uh, the main role and uh, the future uh, and the political uh, solution of the Syrian crisis will be possible only through this axis of Iran, Russia and Syria. All right, that's journalist and political analyst Sayed Mustafa Khoshesh joining us via Skype from Tehran. Mr. Khoshesh, as always, it's a pleasure having you with us here on Press TV.